Wiring Japanese bikes with battery and coil ignition can be tricky if it's electronically triggered, but with a little knowledge of what's going on it can be much easier. In the How to Understand a Wiring Diagram video the boss used a coil ignition setup which confused a few people judging by the comments, so I'll start there. Ignition coils contain two sets of windings, a primary winding that has a 12-volt power supply from the ignition switch, and grounds through the points. When current is flowing through the primary winding to ground it creates a magnetic field and the secondary winding is sitting in that field. When the points open the primary winding no longer has a current flowing through it and the magnetic field collapses, in effect moving across the secondary winding, so it induces a current in the secondary winding which is at a much higher voltage due to the far higher number of turns in the secondary winding. Lots of volts, not many amps, so the current can jump across the spark plug gap, but isn't likely to kill you. So that's how battery and coil ignition works, you provide current to the coil, when you switch it off, you get the spark. The trick lies in timing when you turn it off, hence ignition timing. Points aren't great at higher RPMs so it makes sense to switch things electronically which is what the igniter box does by sensing a trigger wheel using the ignition pickups. Logically then the box needs a wire for each coil that it can switch on and off to ground, so a ground wire too. The box will need power, so there's another wire and it will need to connect with the ignition pickups. Pickups need two wires each, but they can share one of those wires and later four-cylinder igniter boxes often only have one pickup, so on a four-cylinder bike engine you can expect two, three or four pickup wires. The easy way to tell is to look at the pickups on the engine. To recap then, an igniter box will have a power wire, a ground wire, a wire for each coil and somewhere between two and four pickup wires. Taking this GPZ550 igniter as an example, the pickups have four wires red, blue, yellow, and black. The igniter has eight wires, red, blue, yellow, and black, for the pickups, then a black and yellow, a yellow and red, another black and a green. It's a Kawasaki so the black and yellow is a ground, the yellow and red is the same color as the wires on the engine kill switch so that's the power, the green wire is one of the coils and the other black is the other coil. At this point, some genius having cut the plug off of the wires, the only remaining question is which of the two black wires goes where. As it happens they're grouped so that the pickup wires are together and the coil wires are together, so it's a 99% chance that tells you which wire is which. Looking at the later GT550 igniter from the drop seat bobber there are 9 wires and a plug for the igniter. The pickup wires have been separated out of the loom and the plug for those is still attached to the igniter, which tells us what 4 of them are for. Again, still a Kawasaki so the black and yellow is the ground wire, yellow and red is power to the igniter, green and black are coil wires, and then there's that brown and white one. The GT550 has some safety interlocks, with a clutch switch, a side stand switch, and the neutral light all getting involved. The mystery brown and white wire connects to something called the diode pack. Diodes are essentially one-way valves for electricity and the diode symbol indicates which way the current will flow through. Looking at the diagram the brown and white wire can only be connected to ground, through the switches, so grounding it out should fool the igniter box into thinking all the safety interlock stuff is in safe mode and let it make sparks. Yamaha's FJ11 and 1200 seem to have a bit of a reputation for being awkward to wire. A lot of that is due to the frequent revisions across the various models. 1100s and early 1200s have two ignition pickups but share a wire so only three pickup wires, Later 1200s have a single pickup, two wires and yet plug into the same style of four terminal socket on the igniter. That four terminal socket though has the two pickup wires, a red wire and a green wire. Over on the other socket on the igniter there are two coil wires, a power wire, a ground wire, and two more, a blue and white and a blue and yellow. The blue and white gets involved with the starter solenoid and the fuel pump, and can be happily left disconnected. The blue and yellow again does safety interlock stuff and needs to be grounded. Over on the four terminal socket the red and the green do something with the oil level light and the fuel gauge, but the igniter will work without them connected to anything. As a side note the fuel gauge is most likely connected to the igniter because the igniter is a good place to put a 9 volt regulator to stabilize the fuel gauge reading. The technique then, even for things as unnecessarily complicated as the later FJ igniter is to identify the four things you know it's going to need, power supply to the igniter, ground for the igniter, coil wires, and pickup wires. After that it's just a case of tracing the remaining wires and seeing what they do and whether they need to be left disconnected or grounded. 
As a sweeping generalization, any spare wire that goes to any side stand switch, clutch lever switch, or the neutral light either directly or through another electrical unit is usually grounded to make things work, anything else is left disconnected and insulated against accidental grounding. Obviously this is a very generalized overview intended to demystify things at least a little. It's by no means definitive or comprehensive. The risk is all yours but I hope that's been helpful. I've been Neil your AI narrator, take care of yourselves and I'll see you again.